museum of fire. Time is the substance I am made of. Time is a river which sweeps me along, but I am the river. It is a tiger which destroys me, but I am the tiger. It is a fire which consumes me, but I am the fire. Jorge Luis Borges. A person looks at a work of art. Someone looks at something. Peter Tyndall. You never look at me from the place from which I see you. Jacques Lacan. How can I express this? Beside the railway line, one, a small brush fire on the edge of a hill. Two, in the middle of a green oval, a woman walking along the 100 metre sprint track one way, with a man in a suit walking the other. Three, a series of concrete pits covered in graffiti, flame colours, a private secret language. Four, a burnt out house in an estate. The woman next to me, carrying an enormous white panda, falls in the aisle as she gets up to leave. School children discussing sex and probability, the girls twirling their hair. Five, the boys game enough to sit with girls and the boys too afraid. I am coming down the mountain to see you. At Blacktown Station, a man with red hair and a rough red beard searches the carriages and comes out empty-handed, arms stretched out in a question mark to someone unseen further along. Six, the backs of small, cheap A.V. Jennings homes with individual marks of improvement, a sunroom, a porch, a pergola, and a larger boss's home being built on the edge of a factory. Seven, eight, and nine. A massive shredded clear plastic spilling out of a row of red dump masters, like frozen smoke. A tangle of wires on an old light pole, like a delicate sculpture. A boy wearing a data t-shirt. In the Museum of Fire. Lilydale Tech, 1972. Exhibit A. Jenny Lovett's bright red socks. The ones she wore the day Miss McIntyre took us to George's for a needlework exhibition. Twenty of us with our hitched up dresses and scruffy shoes and blue-grey tech school jumpers. The colour of the woman's hair behind the counter. Striding heads high past the $500 outfits, the Turak shoppers. Setting the store detectives off like alarm bells as we passed. If you wanted an artistic career, artistic career, the career guide said, you could be a window dresser. If you wanted to help people, help people, you could be a social worker or a youth worker. If you liked outdoors, outdoors, fruit picker. If you liked indoors, indoors and dealing with the public, dealing with the public, shop assistant. Another excursion, making an exhibition of ourselves, number two, bold as brass. Waiting for the bus beside the Yarra, hanging around the barbecues, and the Scotch college boys rowing for their lives, with Jenny and Susan Butler yelling obscene suggestions in their wake. Our teacher said, Those boys have probably never seen girls like you before. Exhibit B. Exhibit B. Making an exhibition of someone else, or eyeing someone off. The dreamy young man on the train with gorgeous eyelashes. We'd search the carriages until we found him, then sit opposite, staring. He tried to evade us by taking a later train. We caught him out one night when we missed ours. Then there was the time, spectacle two, we stood on the desks in the portables to get a better look at the girls from Swinburne Tech and their cool city haircuts. And the time we stood on the toilet steps at recess, spectacle three, a portable block, like everything else, and saying the lion sleeps tonight at the top of our voices. 
We made chip butties from white bread rolls and potato chips and shared them out for lunch between us. First class, second class, third class. The boys would snigger when the teacher said periods. <laughs> I'd get called sexy by the boys at the station and then they'd yell, Oh, she's flat as a pancake anyway. We were taught to take the measure of things. Copper plus tin equals... Mr Knightley, our favourite science teacher, pointing with his two remaining fingers, doing tricks with Bunsen burners and crucibles and coloured powders. He was our favourite because we could always get him to play the nature films backwards. At the Intertech Sports we got to run on a cinder's track and once we got to wear spiked running shoes, borrowed. Exhibit C. The sound of thousands of kids banging cardboard and plastic folders on the seats in the grandstand. Sunshine Tech, Lilydale, Faulkner, Coburg, Box Hill, railway station suburbs. Jenny Anderson was bound for the Olympics, set to set the world on fire, we were certain. She practiced so hard and won the Sportswoman of the Year award every year. I wore spiked shoes and flew. See the tracks? My tears? We did cross-country runs from the school, around the cemetery, down the hill, through the sewerage farm, running in circles, bound for somewhere. Industry, integrity, ingenuity. Our school motto was emblazoned on our pockets. Everyone knew what industry was, factories, but the rest was as mysterious as why Mr Roberts always said, I appreciate your difficulties. I thank you for your difficulties? Doesn't make sense. And everyone knew tech kids were factory fodder, but it seemed a bit rude to embroider it on our blazers. In assembly each week, Mr Parker warned the girls not to kick the boys in the balls. The English room smelt of masonite and shavings from the woodwork room next door, of mud and bananas in the bottoms of school bags. We had lots of Franks and Tonys and Enzos and Vinces at our school. Susan Tate was the only Aussie girl to go out with a wog. Safety in numbers. Basic maths. Nobody breaks rank. You stay with the pack. Count upon this. Because the probability is... Once, on an art excursion, I slipped and dropped a red plastic bucket into the river. Well, Mr Davies said, that at least will still be there in a hundred years. I go to university and have dreams about red trains and blue trains. One day, I meet a young student art teacher who wants to work at a technical school. I ask why. Well, they're so good with their hands, she says. Trains rushing past each other in the night. Clatter, clatter. See this exhibit? See its complexion, image, air, cast, colour, presence? Dissect it. Analyse it. On a train, a boy says to me, You are so class conscious, as if I invented it. I had a thorough education, although it depends what it is you're looking for. Please disregard. Please overlook. Are you intent upon? Unmindful? This record, document, diploma, seal, witness, reference. Fingerprints carry weight. Speak volumes. Speaks for itself. Depend upon it. The tracks behind me. In the tunnel, the windows become mirrors. I want to pick up the lobster phone and call you. What should I say? I want you to listen. Jenny wanted to run. The museum is a glass house. Highly inflammatory documents everywhere. In the city, I will go shopping at Grace Brothers and envy the schoolgirls with their father's credit cards and neat clothes. I'll try on lipsticks and expensive shoes and wearing my invisible red socks I'll hold my head up. 
I go to the art gallery through the domain and see you waiting for me there. You'll overlook the way I'm dressed. We go inside. Inside, it's like sex. The colours, the crowd. This is a silver train. Jenny wants the gold medal. The art gallery is a house of dreams, a dream home. My domestic science teacher would be impressed. I know my station in life. I have the ticket, see, under my fingernails. Artless. You are in a sleeping car with your reading glasses on. Be careful going past Granville. I am a hillbilly coming down from the mountain. It's a fair weather in Sydney. We get lit and walk through the park. The fairy lights. You're married, of course, and I'm just window shopping. This is my river. This is my fire. This is me.